This is a CEO Africa, a platform that is being set to actually celebrate an African icon. And um, the platform is a Meteor CEO. And then the person we have today is someone whom African have been yearning for. Someone who has actually succeeded in the world that is actually meant for men. And there is no other person than the Chief Mrs. Um, Florence. And um, today, you'll be hearing from the horse's mouth how she has been doing it and how she has actually been able to make the name for herself and um, with her brand. So, good afternoon, ma. Good afternoon. Uh, please, can we meet you, ma? I'm engineer Florence Iwiki of Lumatech Ventures PLC, Lumatech Computer Factory. Okay, thank you. Please, uh, Ma, can, um, can you tell us how your growing up was? You mean at home, when we were young? Yes, everything. Well, we grew up with a family of our girls. And my father was in Michelle, very strict. Um, he was proud to have his girls. And they had to agree that still they had. And I think that formula would because we were able to all come out, at least with something important to us and to him. Oh, wow, thank you. Um, it's interesting to know that the person right here is actually the CEO of Omatech Computers. And um, as you have heard from her, we want to know, ma, how difficult or easy was the starting point of your career, especially as a female engineer? As a female engineer, I did chemical engineering first, and I had a special project in school. Actually, the project cut across two universities, University of Ife and University of Lagos. The present vice chancellor of, Ife, of Unilife happens to be my supervisor in University of Lagos. Uh, it was also a blend of our chemical engineering and kinetics engineering. And this was why I needed to do a lot of computation, simulation, iteration. And doing that with organisms wasn't as simple as doing that with numbers. So I needed to use the spreadsheet at that time. I knew it was a Fortran card we were using at that time, which was very difficult to use. So this was how I joined one of my lecturers then that just came from Rochester, Dr. Ken Jonah. He brought the first XT computer to Ife. It was his personal computer desktop. So I joined him and learned how to use this and I was able to use the spreadsheet Lotus at that time to do my project. And that was how he started. Mine wasn't from a business venture. Mine was different because uh, I needed it for my project. So I came out to do NYSC, and um, I noticed a lot of executives had the computers on their table in Lagos, but they didn't know how to use them. So I started closing from work to go and teach executives on our planet. Then inside the NMPC where I was, I started helping them to work with this. And this was how I started. So, I basically started by training executives. I coined out that kind of thing for myself. And you train one, you get referred to another, you train another. And these are all CEOs and executives. And over time, they wanted to see, to, to have the computers. So I needed to source for good computers with them. Then I had one engineer that used to help me at that time. And that's it. That was how I started. How you started Omatech? Yes, and uh, I was teaching executives at Society General then. And for the first time, it was a big organization Union Bank, the MD, D, DGMs, and four GMs. So I needed to collect my money from Union Bank and Society General. And for the first time, 
And like the other CEOs, they wouldn't pay an individual. They had to pay a company. I started in 86. Around that 88, I needed to quickly go and register a company so I could get my check. So this was how I just I came up with the name. Did the, one of my the executives that is a lawyer that I just trained registered the company for me. And this was how I was able to get my check out in a corporate name. Wow. And Iwante got officially born in 88, but unofficially in 86 because I already started working as a lead corporate in 86. That's great. How did you come about the name Omate? <laughs> well, it was my village name. Village name? So that's why I'm proud to so say So what's that the meaning? African name. What's the meaning of <laughs> and can you pronounce the village name? Maybe later I'll tell you. <laughs> the word Africans will want to hear this, they'll want to know this. I was Be popularly known as Oma. Oma. So I just a lot of people were using T C H. I didn't like common then, so I just changed it then to T K. Great. So, so what's the meaning of Oma? I got lost. God like loves you. Child of God, something. Like Great. That. God loves you. Oma have now transformed to Oma Tech. <laughs> Wonderful. Oh, thank you, Ma. Um, we also want to know, being the first factory to locally assemble computer cases, speakers, keyboard, and mouse in the whole of Africa, are there forms of encouragement? from either federal or state government in promoting the services of Omatech computers? Well, the long journey and the compounded uh, question. Um, the basic thing I would say is that we had started way back. I used to sell the foreign brands. Eventually, I saw my own brand name. So that same name of the company, I used to form my brand for the computer and why did I do that? As a chemical engineer I saw that uh, there are so many all this compact IBM and all the foreign brands we were selling were actually being produced out there and different components produced at different places and some they used to assemble themselves later they started outsourcing the assembling and I kept year in, year out watching what was going on. And I said, no wonder there is unemployment in my country because there were too many productions going on in different places for these brands. So this was how I wanted to do something like that in Africa. And this was how we became a CKD completely knockdown factory because I needed to follow that kind of concept for so many reasons that will pay this continent because that's the only way you can attract in, uh, technology here. You can say that you are make institutionalizing the, the whole education system in our own sector in the sense that a lot of technology know-how can be brought back in. You know, so we start, I started that way. And um, unfortunately, in Africa, they don't understand this concept. In Asia is a common concept. You might be producing casing, somebody else might be producing speakers, somebody is producing ordinary IO card, the other one is producing motherboard, Seagate is doing hard disk, Samsung is doing DVD. I can count 13 different components for you with different factories, which tells you already. And they are partnering with the education system, which uses the environment and so on, job creation, you know. And this, from also doing the foreign brands, I noticed that the key manufacturers that will give you quality are the big ones. And they were the ones producing for the foreign brands we were selling. So for you not to start your local brand and buying your raw materials from the same big guys you know when you were doing the foreign brands, my dear, is a, is a game of volume. It's a volume game. It's economies of scale. To have quality, you have to buy from these guys. 
they don't play with quality, they don't jeopardize, they won't compromise. And that means you need volume, which means you need high lots, high funding. You might not even have your own money to do that kind of business. So, how do I now explain to a bank that just took an LPO from me for a client that owns 200 computers? That these 200 computers, I'm buying motherboard in 10,000 pieces, I'm buying casing in 10,000 pieces, I'm not buying 200 or 50 for that particular plant, and they want me to open letter of credit. I'm buying components, I'm not buying finished products. So what am I saying in essence? This country and this continent is still a continent of finished products, consumers of finished products. We have not gotten used to being consumers of or producers of those finished products. So the way our banking is structured so does not align. So it became very difficult for factories like us to get you know to get involved with these banks to get the kind of structure that you need meanwhile in asia is a single market all the lc's were opening here the foreign banks are collecting them in asia they will give the manufacturers their money off front because they need cash they will discount it get permission they are the ones waiting for the money back the first time we started seeing this kind of situation where we feel that we're getting near to where people are understanding this concept. And that is the concept that will create jobs. Is when Bank of Industry started looking into manufacturing. When they initially started with uh, funding infrastructure only. You can't take money for infrastructure and I don't have money for working on it. How do I fund the infrastructure and build factory? Where will the raw materials come from? They tell you to go to the bank for raw materials, for working capital. Banks don't understand this kind of structure. It's more of a trading structure we have in the bank. So, and then you are competing in these big factories with Compaq, HP, and Co. at LIBOR rate 3, 6, 5%. We are borrowing at 20 something percent. We used to borrow that something percent. And yet, they believe that local brands should be more cheaper than the foreign brands. I have over 20% gap in funding and the borrowing cost. Mm -hmm. So that's why some of us went abroad. But recently we've been able to break through with Bank of Industry. They said women don't help women, but for the first time I saw a woman help a woman. She sat down to understand the structure and she saw that is a different structure there is need to start looking into it you know and i learned that we've also she's used that to help many other companies as well it's not all our things we've structured we have but at least we got one project out which is which was a breakthrough so it made us to feel confident but the major breakthrough was really when the president of us on just regime understood this concept and I uh, was not sure how Africa could become a share of. I mean, in 10 years' time, can Africa become the China of today? You know? And with that, policies started coming out, local content policy. Because it's one thing to get money, it's another thing to have to buy in volume. Then, you buy in volume, who, who buys your product? So, we needed policies to drive the sales. In other countries, the head of the country is the main campaigner for local content. So that was when we started driving local content, local patronage policy. He died during the era regime, but later, with the new minister, we are reviving him back, and the new president now. So with the policy coming up, although the policy is still in the public sector, the amount of money the banks are sending out of this country. The oil sector has started to embrace local content, thanks to you know, some of the old ones there, plus this local content monitoring board in Bayelsa. They were able to work with the oil sector. We need to bring these things back home. We have so many Nigerians, intelligent Nigerians. You saw students in the factory. In schools, they've never opened some computers. 
primary schools come here, the ICT teaches them theoretically. They've never seen these things practically. So we welcome them for IT placements, we welcome them for excursions, we partner with schools. It's a long journey. You can't say that we have need ICT in education or otherwise. We thought really embracing local manufacturing, local content. The funding is still not there as much as it should be. But we'll see how it goes. So, um, by and large, you think the state government, the federal government of this country is doing enough to support the likes of uh, Omatech Computer? The right. federal government has picked up what the president of us did by reviving those policies that will encourage what we do. The state government, not all of them. We all led up some of these schemes recently. We led up Omoy Pong or whatever, so many of these schemes. They are not local programs, they are foreign programs. And yet, we're looking for employment within the states. We're looking for direct investment to the state. If this thing works, before you know it, you see one state maybe specializing in casing, another one in speakers. The different components will now be produced in different places. We can't have a cake and eat it. We can't say we want local production investments there and there when we ourselves are not promoting local content. How many state governors can do this and say they are promoting local content? How many banks are funding manufacturers? To even realize and understand the concept of funding manufacturers, they are not. We were a standard in, in Asia. I can open an unconfirmed LC for my suppliers from our account abroad. But I can't do that from here. And yet they think the solution is for us to open LC. Nobody is collecting commission for all their LCs. We're trying to work with the Libyan government to see whether we can work with the banks. The banks have huge turnover on ICT, but they're not patronizing local brands. So there has to be a total campaign across. What is the quota that each sector is contributing in promoting job creation, in passing technology gap, in empowering our youths? We house 10 students from Cumberland, 10 students from Bowen, 10 students from Unilag, like that, for our city. And we can see the difference when we are doing it. Over time, all these engineering students, you will see that they won't be able to compete at work. So it's a serious issue. Some of us are in it already. And we've been there, we're 26 years over. And we still believe in it, and we know it will work because we drove it for the foreign brands. So why can't we drive it for the local brand? I'm proud of the brand name. I don't know the meaning of other names, but I know the meaning of my own brand. Thank you, Mrs. Oman. God is with us. <laughs> wow, it's interesting. So um, you haven't said this. We want to ask, apart from what you've said, what are the challenges? That actually, um, you know, specific to Omate, you know, in the past and the present, right? Well, the major one we've had in the past, for whatever reason I don't know, we've had uh, schemes with joint venture with banks, and we've seen nice ways of almost being taken over, which says also. That uh, banks should, should be made to redirect the way they are being made to join venture with SMEs. A lot of SMEs have crashed in this land. We thank God we didn't crash. We almost did. We got the company back, we got our properties back. We have floated over 90% of our team. So that's that. The other one I won't say is peculiar, but there is sincere 
problem in Africa and Nigeria now of skilled workers. Because okay. during this crisis, I kept some staff. I didn't let them go because I had trained. I know as is a peculiar system. But the concept of manning your shop and meeting the target in your shop and sustaining your shop is still not there in Nigeria. You still think your salary must come, whether you make money. How many of the staff ask themselves, how much have I made to warrant my salary? So in that period, we kept some staff. I don't say we got into trouble. By the time I released them, we had to pay so much. And they didn't even see whether you were trying to survive at that time or not. And we thank God, we sorted that one out in a way. Some are taken out totally, some are being spread over a period. But you see, it's still there. The problem is still there. Whether for us as this kind of factory, but we'll be short of skilled workers all that time. So for employers to be able to train their staff, the government needs to embank seriously on how to assist their service, assist companies. It's only when you make money you train your staff. So peculiar to my tech, I've said funding, because our, our funding is peculiar, and we've resolved it from this year. You know, so other than that, we've had to speak more grammar to sell, because our brand is competing with the foreign brands. We're buying from the same factories the foreign brands are buying from. They buy cheaper than, than us. They borrow at 20% less than us. And yet we're competing in the same atmosphere. So between government and state government and banks and big corporate organizations not embracing the encouragement of local content. So that we have more grammar to speak. So what we have done is to make our factory one of the best you can see in Africa. And we encourage people to come down and see for themselves. At least if you see for yourself, you know it can work. You know it's here in Africa, right? Microsoft gave us the Best System Builders Award in 2005 for West, East, and Central Africa. And we beat 43 countries. So it's real, and it's, it can happen. It's here in Nigeria. We have a factory in Ghana. It's a different concept there. The mentality there is totally different. We change it. But again, they still have it, but their own is not much of government. Their own is much of staffing from There's a serious labor issue. Staff are not working hard, but they have been overly protected by some rules, which is not very conducive for attracting investors into the country. So you see that Africa still has a lot, and yet they must compete in the same global world. Great. Thank you so much, ma'am. We actually, Nigeria is um, having a population of over 200 million. And um, Africa is a big market. What do you think that if the federal government should do for OMATEC right now, and the state government, which is legal state government, should also do it? What do you think they should do right now that will actually give Omate an edge to project this Nigerian thing and this African thing to the whole of African continent? If I put it well, not just in Omate, for a country of 200 million and a continent of more than that, number one, we're giving a turnover not promoting made in our own country. Chinese man will buy his own product. Chinese man has to know that because they have population. They use that population for their own brands and the money was there. They use it to create jobs with them and they use it to empower. It's going to be serious problem if we don't start to look at how to encourage our own. How 
to become producers. That is the future of Africa. Number two, if we start to do this, a lot of people effects positively. The government will not only support local content as their own contribution, they will encourage policies that will help it. They will influence the banks, influence all the big companies to patronize their own. Remember how the oil started? Napiers used to create a percentage that must belong to Nigeria and NPC and the other percentage in the joint venture deal. You have to encourage things to come back here. Now, Chinese went one step above that. They started creating uh, ICT parks, industrial parks. They started creating environments where me, you, all of us can create our factories. We share infrastructure. So I don't need to think of solar. I don't need to think of electricity. I don't need to think of water. Everything is shared in the same complex. So it reduces my cost of producing, which brings down the cost, the final cost of the product, finished product. They start getting funding from the government. The first people they will give such funds to are the people within their industrial complex. So there are many ICT parks every state is doing. They didn't even get the concept. The ICT park in this Africa should be the Chinese kind of ICT park, not the Silicon Valley type. That's where we are. We should face our level and face it. If there's 10 people, 100 researchers, create a section for them, they will bring their works out. There's a lot to be done. The, the state government should encourage things like this. Funds are single digit, 3%, 5%, 10% at most, should be dedicated to these areas. They are directing funds. How many times have we heard there is funding for ICT? Meanwhile, you know, ICT should be the driver of the economy development of this country. So that's what is going on. Thank you. You are still listening um, from uh, the horse's mouth, the CEO of Omatech Computers. Uh, Ma, what do you think should be done to promote? Nigerian ICT and African ICT because research has shown that there's a lot of money to be made from ICT, you know, especially in Nigeria. What do you think the federal government, the state government should do right now in order to promote this aspect and also add to our economy? That's what I just said. ICT should be the driver of the economy. Yes. So the state government themselves they patronizing the local brands. I just said. So they should make a policy to patronize the local brand. They should look for funding to encourage ICT based projects or manufacturing in ICT or manufacturing as well. Are you with me? These Sorry. are the kind of things that can bring down cost of production. They should create central parks that will house many manufacturers together, so infrastructures should be shared. Okay. Chinese did it. You go, you see different parks, and you want to set up a factory, that's the first place you go. Your cost of production is so. Manufacturing computer here and the rest, do you get incentive from the federal government? We used to have zero percent duty from the government. We went, we never saw it again. No one was struggling to have it. What happened? The custom initially said they cancelled the incentives. I don't think that was an incentive or consensual. They gave it different names. Whatever it is, we're still working with the current government to retrieve it back. So, at that time we had many. I remember that was when we got Palmyra status. It was a stakeholders forum the president of Asanjo had. We're all there for the first time. 
Family sector COVID said positive today. I will put raise a hand and the minister in charge can answer. We need to encourage that to more. Bringing stakeholders together to interact with the government to actually so that they can get to know their needs and solution immediately. No, no, that's my problem. Solution immediately. The Minister of Transport immediately was tackling that problem. Great. So, how about the state government? Is the state government partnering with the manufacturers in the state? Well, I just said it. Are you getting incentive from the state government? Not Why? Only, not only, you see, they made it like an individual, which is not right. You see, there's that to diffuse properly. Some states are even believing they are manufacturers by themselves. What private sector is trying to do, we're competing now with state governments trying to be manufacturers. Oshun is producing computer and trying to encourage all the other state governments to do the same. Producers do. No policy makers now. They want to be producers. So there are so many issues. So we're working with all these states to let them see the way it is. And these are foreign brands. They are not produced here. Have you come forward to let them know as a stakeholder that no, this is not going to help our system? That's what we're saying. What effort have you made? Well, we've invited them to forums and we're talking to them. How, this is how? not a normal tech issue now. Okay. This is a, I'm the president of Information Technology Association. Okay. So we just had um, this Nigerian Computer Society conference. Okay. And we've invited them. So we're all working on this, even from an industrial angle. So this is not peculiar to that. We're not, we're not the only manufacturers. But it pains us when people parade foreign brands openly and market it so much at the expense of their own. The local brand. Indigenous and yet brand. we are looking for employment opportunities. They are saying they are not produced yet. They are still buying them until they can produce. But all this, even if we bring the foreign brands here to come and produce here, they are still better. You know, so. Oh, sorry, ma. I know we actually wasted your time. Is Omatech in the Nigerian Stock Exchange? Yes, we are the for now the only computer company listed. Bring that the share price will start to go. Wow. Having um, always walk, 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 walk as it is. How do you relax? Africans want to know, do you actually relax? How do you relax? Africans find their ways of relaxing. There's no African that doesn't have the So how do you relax, man? I mean, you know all the ways we relax. Weekends we go out. Things like that. Do you still have time to go out weekends? Well, why not? You have children, so you have to go out. So it's compulsory. As a woman, you don't leave out some of those goals. So how do you combine business and homework? How do you? We survived that for 26 how? years. The only advice I pass out, women, career women, hold your children with you. If they say breastfeeding, Exclusively to it, the place that you must carry your children. Don't stress. 